Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about Amazon Translate. I know it's an old service that was being provided by Amazon, but there is a new twist over here. They have added like we can upload a document or HTML file or a text file or any file that will be getting translated. So this option was not there. So today I will show you how we can utilize the GUI in the AWS console, as well as I will show you how we can uh, use the APIs and we can use the translate. So I'll be using a Postman and all. But before that, let's uh, a quick overview. So it's a neural machine translation service that uh, delivers fast, high quality, and affordable and customizable language translation. So they have enabled the real-time translation of uh, doc files and real-time translation we can also do for HTML, uh, text, these files. And we can also preserve the source document format without like uh, uh, changing the format of the source document so it's quite interesting so it was not there it was just a recently added uh, feature we can use the uh, sdk to build our application uh, we can have our in c sharp .net, we can make it or in java or we can just uh, uh, consume the apis or we can send make a post request in order to uh, get the response so let's uh, i will just quickly so before that you can see th there is some endpoints are there and there are certain quotas are there and as i mentioned we can also use aws sdks to access this uh, apis in respective uh, programming languages whichever we want to use it so i will just quickly jump onto my Okay, so you can see over here, I am in the AWS console, so you can see Amazon Translate. So you can see there is a text, there is a document option is also available now. So I'll just show you initially how we used to have like, uh, hello, my name is just spawn. So you can see uh, this is automatically translated. So you can also have the source language automatically detected and then you can just choose over here whichever language you want to change it. So you can see this is how it is in French. So this is, uh, this feature was already there. You can see over here, now uh, application integration. Now there is very few documentation about it. Now this is how we can uh, send a JSON request and this is how we can and get the response for the text. So this was already there. So if you go to the API references over here, so you can get the endpoints. So those endpoints, you can see AWS translate endpoints for each region is there. So we need we can utilize this endpoints and there's certain quotas are mentioned. You can see US East 2, translate US East 2, Amazon AWS.com, then FIPS. So these are the endpoints you can use it now uh, now this is uh, like a, just a simple example like i'm typing some text even if i utilize a postman so you can see this is my postman over here so i'm sending exactly the same thing in the body let's say i'll just copy from there so let me use the one that I have sent to this interface. So I will just copy from here. And then I will put it over here in my request. That's it. Now, if I click on the send, and now you can see this endpoint over here that I have configured. Now, before doing all those things, you need to make it sure you have set up the authorization and you have set up the your so you can see over here if i just i'm sending you this one this uh, endpoint so if i click on the send so it will uh, so this is how the same result i'm getting over here this is how we can uh, access to the apis but um, before the setting this in the postman, if you want to do the testing and also you need to make it sure you have to do the 
uh, authentication. So it basically generates the um, token. So this is access key and secret. Uh, you will be having your own based upon your user and make it sure the type you choose it over here, AWS signature. So that's all you have to do over here. And in the advanced configuration, you have to make sure we are having over here AWS region, US East one and translate. So these things we need to set up the service name and AWS region, the, the endpoint, whatever endpoint you will be using. Uh, if I go to the headers, uh, in the headers, uh, sometimes it's mentioned, sometimes it's not mentioned, but uh, there's no clear documentation about it. So if you go to this content type, you need to pass this one, application X AMZ JSON 1.1 and XAMZ target, you need to provide this one. AWS Shine Frontend Service 2017-0701 Translate Text. So these two things you need to add it to yourself. Then only it will work. Then only it will send the uh, JSON request. Now these things I figured it out by uh, tracing to the like by inspecting the traffic, the network. So I was just uh, like checking what was the payload and all. So this is how I find it out like what needs to be added in the headers. Okay. Now uh, coming up to the next part, there is a newly added feature over here. So if you go to this one, let's say I'm taking one text document. So this is my document over here. So you can choose the language if you want, it's your wish. So I will choose over here. This is one document over here and I can choose over here language. Let's keep it French. It will give you the output over here also, plus it will translate the document without changing the format and it will be getting downloaded also. So there is a few other things are also there. Custom terminology, if you want, these are the additional settings you need not to configure. If you want, you can utilize this, like uh, like whether the translation output, some uses some uh, tone and all those things, masking and all is required or not. These are a little bit advanced, like you can say additional settings that you can make it. So you can see if I click over here, I think I need to choose the language on the top. So it is not auto detected in as in case of the text. So I need to specify this is English. And then I can click on translate and download. So if you see it is getting downloaded. So if I open this file, so you can see it is whatever I've written, it's getting translated to French. So if you want to compare it, you can see over here, the API integration over here, you can see this is what the document is being taken and this is being translated and translated document file name is this one. But um, when I tried to like uh, put it with a postman, when I tried to send a JSON request with a postman, uh, it was not working. So again, I need to check the payload, what is what kind of request it is. I basically, I inspected this whole, uh, the UI, UI over here, and then I check the various network things over here, like uh, over here. Then I check the log and all, and then I came to know like uh, what is the payload and all these things from this one. So you need not to worry, I have just added there. So you can just uh, utilize the one, my findings and all, you can easily utilize it. I just showed you like how we can check. So I need to send it again and then I need to uh, like uh, capture the traffic. So you can see over here. Uh, okay, so things happening over here. If I go to this one, okay, let me stop recording. So you can see there is head points and all those things. You can see home. So this is how I check the payload and all. 
and what are the headers are there you can also check so when you when i click on the translate document so you can check the payload accordingly you can uh, modify your headers and all those things so similarly uh, when i was trying to send this one it was not i was not able to uh, get the response so i just check the header and all check the payload and all then over here so i figure it out like it is not exactly the same that the one they are showing in the interface it is like a document instead of providing the document name i tried various way adding it in the rows uh, like uh, uh, adding in the form of like uh, form of files so nothing worked basically form data uh, binary nothing worked so basically when i specify that content the content is being converted to base 64 and the content type when i click send then only i'm getting a response now this response is again uh, base 64 so i need to convert it back so uh, in order to do that i just utilize this uh, one online uh, tool like like a file i uploaded my file so you can see i will just upload my file so when i encode the file So you can see this is the encoded content. So same thing I'm passing over here, the content. You can see over here, BXK, whatever it is. And then, I can choose this one. So this is what I'm sending and I'm receiving this one, a base 64, the translated document. So I will just copy this one. So I will put it over here so I can decode to a file. So you can see this is what a preview is given over here. So the output is similar. You can see text.txt file. So this is how we can utilize it. You can uh, create a, a, a small application and then you can uh, call this endpoints. You make it sure it's a post. And then you can pass those values and make it sure your header values are correct. And don't forget to do the authorization part also. So you can like have a separate user and you can uh, give him the permissions to use the AWS Translate. And you can use it uh, like uh, AWS access key and ID in order to hit to this APIs. I hope you like my video. Please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.